Commodities Market Update now. We have uh, Dumebi Oluwole, Analyst Financial Derivatives Company, joining us right here in the studio for the second time uh, this week. Uh, Dumebi, last time uh, we met, uh, I think the oil prices were down. Yeah. And they're down again <laughs> yes. today, even though yes. I saw some, you know, some volatility, yeah. you know, in between. But it's back down. Yes, <laughs> it's back down. And um, this time around, it's because of an increase in um, the U.S. Um, stockpiles for crude oil and um, a resurgence in COVID cases in China. So starting with the U.S. crude stockpiles, so typically there's an inverse relationship between um, U.S. crude stockpiles and global oil prices. So when the stockpiles are up, global oil prices fall. And that's because there's a signal to the market that, you know, um, the U.S., my reduced demand for oil because the expectation is that when when there's a drawdown on the stockpiles they would want to buy more from the global oil market to fill it back up but when the, when but when stockpiles are already up you know there are signals that or there, there, there are concerns that demand from the u.s is going to decline so put that side by side what's happening in you know in, in china right now that they're experiencing a resurgence in covid 19 cases there's a possibility that they're going to have another you know a very tough lockdown measure they have and demand is going to slow from china and you know, China is the largest crude um, um, oil, the largest crude oil, crude oil importer globally. So um, put put those two things together. That's what's happening with. That's why oil prices are, are um, somewhat, you know, um, reducing right now. And according to the American Petroleum Institute, so um, U.S. crude stockpiles are up about they were up about 5.6 million barrels um, last week. So clearly, you know, the, the, the signals are that, you know, demand is going to decline. And that's, that's happening, you know, um, despite the fact that there are signals that, you know, all prices are still, all, um, all supply, all, all supply, it's, you know, still tight. You know, the markets are trying to keep all prices at least above, you know, $90 per barrel. So, um, but clearly the, 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 the the um, sentiments towards market sentiments are very, you know, bearish due to this um, concerns on oil demand. Now, and maybe this this year it's the same thing, <laughs> yes. you know, pushing the oil market. Yes. Is that China demand mm -hmm. or U.S. stockpiles? Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what else? What else is going to come next? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if if imagine a scenario where the Russia Ukraine Ukraine war just stops. I replay. That would that would definitely, you know, um, have a huge impact on oil, on on the oil market. And the, what's going to happen is that, you know, it means that now the embargo on on Russia could be lifted. That's could I mean, be. could be. I yeah. mean, but that's this is a, this is an hypothetical scenario, right. and that means that Russia will be able to supply oil to the crude. Um, supply oil to, 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 to the market, and that could bring down prices to about, you know, 80 to 85 dollars per barrel. So that's, that's, that's like the only um, um, thing left right now to, there'll you know. there'll be no need for uh, caps on uh, Russian oil prices. Exactly, exactly. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> right. But I mean, even then, the damage has already been done. You right. know, um, commodity countries are already reeling from the impact of this war on their economy. And it's going to take a lot of time before countries can recover, especially developing countries. Yeah, it's, it's impacted every, every economy uh, right now. But back here, we're seeing uh, our oil output back over a million mm. barrels just a little over just idea. a little over <laughs> i mean well we, it, it's something that we could say is good news but when we well, when we put this um contextually uh, with what is currently happening in the country we know that we can actually do more when we put this um, um production level side by side our opec quota we know that we haven't even met it you know we haven't met it since the beginning of this um uh, uh, um since the beginning of, of, of opec you know trying to ration production and tell countries to increase their quota. I mean, Nigeria hasn't met that quota since the beginning of, of, of that trend. Um, and right now, um, considering like our budget estimate, our production is still significantly you know, lower than what we're, what, what we're estimating that we're going to produce. And the, the, the issues are, and they don't, they don't look like they're ending anytime soon. We're still discovering, you know, pipelines of, you know, we're still discovering, you know, illegal pipelines. All theft is still at a, at, at a record high. You know, um, we're still having production shortings. So clearly, our production, our oil production level is not what it used to be, and it's going to take some time before we can even get to where we need to get to generate as much income for the country. Nigeria right now is revenue 
you know, is, is, has a very huge revenue problem. And until we're able to address issues from our major source of income, because clearly the country is still exposed to oil price shocks, the country still needs a lot more of oil money to come in so that we can at least stabilize to a certain extent. So, um, at 1.02 million barrels per day, we could smile at it, but when we look at how much is, you know, how much leakage is happening there, we still have a lot of work to do. And until we're able I'm to correct if that, the trend will actually continue. This well, trend, most this likely, rising trend. I mean, the, the rising trend clearly it might not continue because, you know, um, we're still having issues. Not a trend with, yet. It, I mean, it's just a one-off, <laughs> one -off. considering that what has been happening, right. you know, um, um, since the beginning of the year. I mean, our all production levels. It fell to as low as about just a little over nine nine hundred thousand barrels per day. So clearly, we still have a long way to go. And until we're able to get things right, and you know, the, the, the issue is that um, oil theft, vandalism, you know, um, smuggling, all of these things, it, it seems as though they've now been incorporated into, you know, how the oil and gas sector is going to is going to be operating for the time being. So um, instead of us hearing hearing. Um, 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 you know, um, regulators within this space coming up with solutions, telling us oh, these are the consequences for those that are going to be caught. This is what needs to be. This is what needs to happen for this for this to end abruptly. Rather, we're seeing you know all theft being incorporated as an issue as to why our production estimates are even being revised. You know, it's now a thing in our in our fiscal framework that oh, due to oil theft. You know, rather than us hearing that oh, oil theft. This is this is what's happening. We're losing this, but we've been able to catch one or two persons and this is the consequence they're going to face because when when it seems as though it has become the norm you know we'll continue to hear more of it and that's no, why no we're going to remain rolling. exactly and we're going to you know continue to you know remain in this loop of constant bad news in the oil sector and this will continue to you know um disincentivize investors coming into that that would love to come into this space so it's just a huge um um, yeah. um jab to the nigerian economy right now and i was looking at uh, one of the economic the economic plans of one of the presidential aspirants for uh, uh next year and they are claiming that they are going to get um output to about four million barrels you know per day and and i'm wondering how possible you know that is what do they have to do i mean that's to make that happen um for on an analytical level i'm not a political analyst but when we look at these things we know that um, a lot of times what, what is being said is not exactly what, what might happen considering the realities that are here on ground. So if, if you hear that kind of ambitious plan from any political aspirant, the big question is how are you going to get it done? We, we don't want things, we don't want to hear things that are going to be sweet to the, ear, to yeah, the, to the ears, so that are going to you know, um, attract, people to, attract people to vote. But the big thing now is how are you going to get it done until we hear steps as to how we plan to increase Nigeria's production up to that level, because we're not even talking about two million barrels per day. Four. We're talking about four million barrels per day from from a country that's already from a country that's already producing under a million barrels per day. So, how do you intend to get it done? What are your plans to stop oil theft? What are your plans to increase our refining capacity? What are your plans to stop vandalism? What are your plans to keep the oil tycoons that already exist in the country to remain? What are your plans to keep them here in the country? Because this this these guys are, they are, first of all, they're diversifying to other um, um, stable economies. They are diversifying to other countries in Africa. They are planning to have, they are planning to um, um, uh, um, dive deep into renewable energy. I mean, what, what, what futuristic plans do you have for them to keep them here? How do you intend to partner with them to stop, you know, the vandalism on their pipelines? Because the truth is, they bear most of the cost on all of this. So they are spending more to drill less. And, 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 and even when they drill less, or even when they, 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 even, even when they, they, they get a lot of oil out of the ground, when they're able to extract a lot more, less of it gets to the tanks, less of it gets to the sea, less of it gets to the market. So how do you intend to stop all, stop all of these things? So um, telling people things are going to be sweet to the ear to attract votes is not what we need right now. What the, we need is the how. What we need is the how. So right. what, what is sweet, but the how is where the detail, you know, where the devil lies in the details. Exactly. All right, let's look at uh, global agricultural commodities market. Now we see uh, wheat there. It's, uh, it's down mm -hmm. $814 a 
uh, bushel. Yes, and uh, that's because um, there are signs that Ukraine would continue to, um, there are signs that Ukraine might continue to supply, you know, um, wheat and no, other grains renewal, yeah. yes even though we don't have the renewal they're, they're asking for a renewal but that has that there's still talks on that turkey russia the, the un and ukraine are still having talks talks on that but with russia back on board and ukraine actually asking for an extension or a renewal of this um, Black Sea Grain Initiative. And it's because, you know, with Russia back on board, it's looking more like it might happen. This renewal might, might happen. Um, so the, the markets are, you know, having some positive sentiments towards that. And that's why all prices, that's why um, rather wheat prices are, are going down. Because if that happens, it means that more supply is going to be in the market. And, you know, um, prices are, are, are softening. Although there are concerns on, you know, other major suppliers like the U.S. The USDA um, released a report, you know, stating that um, um, wheat, wheat from, from the U.S., the, the wheat production from the U.S. might, you know, decline due to adverse weather conditions in most of it, in quite a number of the producing regions. So that as well, you know, is having some um, um, impact on, on the price of wheat globally right now. No, so keep eyes on, on, on that market. But uh, interestingly, mm. uh, yesterday I, I had a peek, you know, at the forex market here yes. and I saw that the Naira mm -hmm. actually strengthened. It, it looks like it came from nowhere. Exactly, exactly. But it didn't just come from nowhere right. <laughs> it didn't just come from nowhere so um the the official the, the, the official rates right and that's the i and e the iefx rate um we depreciated to about 446 so with that marginal depreciation um in the in the in the um official market we saw that you know it was almost as though that there, there was um almost as though there was some uh, um, level of devaluation but not exactly a devaluation you know just some level of it that you know made people you know feel like okay there's some level of transparency but i mean it was just a one-off but the main issue or the main thing that really impacted the naira the parallel market was an increase in um, forex supply to the official window so between last week and this week um forex supply as a first supply to the to the, to, to the official window as at um last week was about 93 you know a million Dollars, but as at you know, um, yesterday there was an increase in it to about 200 million dollars, and that you know just simply meant that more more people could get forex at the official rate of about 446, and that just you know moved demand towards the official to the towards, towards the official rate, and that you know caused the appreciation in in the in the parallel market. So that was what actually happened and caused that sharp appreciation in the, in, in, of I'm the naira in the this parallel is market. Going to continue or I mean, there there. There are, there, are, there are hopes that it would continue. Um, we've seen this is just an effort of the CBN trying to defend the Naira. The, the, the flip side of it is that the, we're going to definitely see a massive drawdown in, an, in our external reserves. And external reserves are already down by about 12%. So com, um, this year compared to, to last year, external reserves are about around like $37 you know, billion dollars right now compared to what it was at this time last year, which was about $42 billion. So, um, we're going to, if, if the CBN is going to continue this move, um, we might, you know, see another drawdown on, on our reserves, a significant decline in in our, in our reserves. But continuing this um, in different modes and methods, or, or by by different magnitudes, that's the better word, might not have, you know, this much of an might not have this much of an impact again. The the the, the CBN has to be consistent. So if we're going to do 200 million um, um, dollars every day or at least every week. The markets can speculate, this is what was going to happen every week. So this is how much we can get, and this is how much we need to plan for to get before now, you know, resorting to, to the parallel market. But in a situation where today you get under 100 million, next, and a few days later, you see 200 million, next day you're seeing 70, maybe 70 million. Right. You know, there, there's, there's, there's um, it's not consistent. And so the markets don't know what to expect. So most people still, you know, would want to get, um, a lot of most of their forex needs right. from, from the parallel markets. No, quite quite a, a tough job, you know, yeah. defending you know fixed rate when your uh, reserves yes. are not uh, 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 up to par. Thank you so much. That was Dumebi Uluwale, analyst, financial directors company. It was great having your perspective. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.